the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. O God, fix our eyes, fix our hearts on you, that we may always find ourselves in your care. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we have that favorite of stories, Jesus walks on the water. That's what this story is called in my Bible, you know, all caps. Jesus walks on the water. I imagine that most of you know it by that name, Jesus Walks on the Water. I've mentioned uh, before an interesting book about the parables of Jesus. The author spends a great deal of time considering how to name the parables, suggesting that often the names we give those stories shape and even limit how we hear what Jesus has to say to us in his wonderful parables. Perhaps the same is true for a story like Jesus walks on the water. If you think about it, there's a lot more going on here. So I'm wondering what might be a more accurate name. How about Jesus walks on the water, the disciples in the boat afraid, Peter on the water too, doing okay for a while, then not so well. <laughs> Jesus catching Peter and the disciples worshiping Jesus. I think that's a lot more accurate, and if we work at it, maybe the next 10 minutes, I think we can get that down. But if you think about it, uh, that name for the story, Jesus walks on the water, the disciples in the boat afraid, and so on, leaves out some interesting details, uh, doesn't it? Did you notice that the disciples are out there in that boat because Jesus sent them there? There's probably a whole sermon in that one detail, don't you think? I will invite you to preach that sermon to yourself, or maybe let me suggest that you listen as the Holy Spirit takes you where you need to go with that, because I have four other sermons I'm planning on preaching here uh, on this text. Of course, there is a simple truth in this story, keep your eyes on Jesus, right? We've heard that before. We'll hear it again. It's that simple Sunday school lesson. P Peter gets out of the boat at Jesus' invitation and he begins to walk on the water, wonder of wonders. But then Peter, distracted by the waters, and he begins to sink. When did Peter begin to sink? 
when he takes his eyes off Jesus. And so all you need to do is keep your eyes on Jesus. Now there's a problem with that sermon. We already knew that, didn't we? Could it really be that Matthew has given us this wonderfully told story in order to encourage you to buck up, get with it, and believe more strongly? There's a problem with that sort of message. It's the law masquerading as the gospel. Commanding it will not accomplish it. And so I want you to wonder with me if perhaps this story could be much more than a simple exhortation to believe. Could it be a story that tells you about this one to whom you should turn in your life? Could it be not about strong faith, but about Jesus who calls people of little faith and loves and redeems, forgives and sends them? As you might well suspect, I have a hunch this is what we have from Matthew today. If we look at this as a story of Peter simply taking his eyes off the ball, it's only a cautionary tale, a sort of click it or ticket kind of warning. But what if Matthew is weaving a more nuanced and insightful story for you? Do you really think faith is so simple that if we just tell you to buck up and keep your eyes on Jesus, you'll just believe better? Maybe faith is simple, but life is hard, huh? What is your faith life like? Does it not wax and wane strong at times, yet that strength is fleeting? Do doubts crowd in and then the doubts get crowded out? In other words, is your faith maybe sort of like Peter's? In this one brief story, we see a marvelous mix of trust and lack of trust, bold faith, and wavering doubt. Along with the other disciples, Peter is in the boat, and Matthew tells us the wind was against them. And here they are, wind-whipped, stormed on the lake, and they think they see a ghost. It's scary enough seeing a ghost, but see a ghost when you're on a wind-whipped boat Indeed, they must have been terrified. But not for long, it seems to me. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid, Jesus calls out. And I wonder, what about the other 11? It almost seems like, well, that's enough for them. That comforts them. Now they're fine. Take heart. Do not be afraid. It is I, Jesus tells them. But not Peter. Peter, that impetuous one, issues a challenge. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus' take heart is not enough. Peter wants a special experience of assurance. And so there is faith and not faith. In this episode of Peter walking on the water, there is great courage and amazing trust in stepping out over the abyss. And Matthew tells us he did walk on the water. But then in the midst of his glory, faithful Peter walking on the water is is distracted and afraid. Can I... Really do this? Won't these waves do me in? And down he goes. Peter, faithful one, not faithful one. Peter, the model disciple, the rock on which the church will be built, sinking like, 
Well, a rock. And then we continue on the journey. Faith, not faith. Faith, Lord, save me. Flailing in the water, Peter knows where to turn. For him, there's no question. He cries out to Jesus, believing that Christ will save him. I liked a line I heard that here, having questioned Jesus, having asked Jesus to call him out of the boat, and now knee deep and going down fast, Peter finds that Jesus does not engage in tough love. I can't help but think if I were there, if I were the one who had called Peter out and he were sinking and he said, save me, I would want to stand there for a while and say, okay, how would you like me to do that? Are you thinking we should go to the boat as he goes on down, right? Matthew tells us immediately. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And the word that is translated caught is not a word like assist. It's not something like helping take him up by his bootstraps. It is the word you would use for catching a falling child, saving that one as he goes off the end of the sofa. That's the sort of catching that Jesus does with Peter. Jesus caught him up like a lost child, a little fearful one, believing and doubting and lost and afraid. And Jesus scooped him up in his arms and brought him immediately to the safety of the boat. This one whom the disciples worship in the boat is one who comes to his disciples of little faith and restores them to himself, restores them to community, and calls them together to bask in God's embrace. Yes, Jesus walks on the water, doesn't quite tell the story. Jesus sending the disciples across the sea, Jesus praying, Jesus walking on water, disciples in boat afraid, Peter on the water too, doing okay for a while, then not so well, Jesus catching Peter and the disciples worshiping Jesus in the boat. Now that's a great title for this story. Or maybe faith, not faith, faith again. Just like you, just like me, Jesus has caught you like he's caught Peter. Jesus has taken hold of you and will never let go. No wonder we love this story so much. It's as simple as can be. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And in our hearts we know there's so much more to this story. For this one to whom you look in faith and in not faith and in faltering faith and in great faith, this one to whom you look catches you always and carries you forward and sends you forth that you might bear that same love to all. Amen.